All right, good afternoon. My name is Kira Loss. I'm a core surgical trainee in urology from the United Kingdom. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon. I thank the chairs for allowing me to present my work. <clears throat> so the title of my project this afternoon is Does the Mineral Content of Tap Water Correlate with Urinary Calculus Composition? Okay, I'll start with a little bit of a background. So the role of increased fluid intake in reducing the risk of urolithiasis is well established in the literature and in clinical practice. However, whether or not the type of fluid or indeed the type of water matters is still up for debate. A number of interventional studies conducted in the last 20 years or so have demonstrated that drinking water with different mineral compositions can alter the urinary parameter of a number of both promoting and inhibitory factors for urolithiasis. Now, in terms of the drinking water supplied through taps, this varies from region to region as water interacts with surrounding uh, rocks, resulting in differences in the dissolved mineral content. Now, focusing in on the UK and in England in particular, where this study was conducted, a recent governmental survey was undertaken that showed that 97% of adults drink tap water and use it for making, drink, uh, for, use it for making drinks. And out of two litres of uh, fluid consumed every day, on average by adults in England, 1.3 litres, or in other words, two thirds of that comes from tap water. So this all raises a really interesting question. Does the mineral content of tap water correlate with calculus composition? So the aim of our study was to determine whether the mineral content of tap drinking water correlates with urinary calculus composition in patients with, with urinary uh, tract stone disease. So to try and answer that question, we looked at all patients with urinary tract calculi that underwent biochemical analysis during a five-year period at two urological centers in the northwest of England. So in addition to uh, the composition data of stones, we collected data that comprised of patient demographics, serum biochemical variables, and a number of water variables, including the total water hardness, as well as the concentrations of calcium, magnesium, and sodium. These water variables were obtained from the local water supply company using patient postcodes on a case-by-case -case basis and then compared to the calculus composition of that patient. The values that we used represent a rolling mean value over a 12-month period since there is likely, of course, to be fluctuation in water quality over time. Okay, moving on to the results. So in total, 1,801 calculi from 1,644 patients were included in our study. Now, these patients in our study received tap water from 87 distinct water supply zones. We classified calculi based on the predominant calculus component. You can see here the pie chart here showing the proportional distribution of the calculi in our study. We then looked to see if any water variable could predict any particular water, uh, type of calculus over others using univariate and multivariate binary logistic regression analysis. Now this here is the multivariate table, and it's a little bit busy, so I'll pick out a few things. We found that the water sodium concentration was an independent predictor of urate calculi, and a negative independent predictor of calcium calculi generally, and calcium oxalate calculi in particular. The total water hardness, the calcium and the magnesium concentrations, as well as the magnesium to calcium ratio, did not predict any particular calculus type over others. What we also did is we looked to see if there was a correlation between the percentage of each of the major calculus components and the same water quality, uh, the same water variables. We found a weak but statistically significant nonlinear inverse correlation between the magnesium, uh, the percentage of calcium oxalate within all calculi, and the magnesium concentration in drinking water. And this relationship is here demonstrated in the scattered plot with a smoothing curve. The total hardness, the calcium, and the sodium concentrations, however, did not correlate with any calculus component. So to date, most studies looking at the uh, relationship between drinking water and calculus composition, or sorry, and uh, urinary tract stone disease have focused uh, on uh, incidence or the formation of calculi. Few have looked at the actual relationship to the composition of uh, stone disease, uh, urinary tract calculi. As far as we're aware, the approach that we used uh, in uh, determining water quality and comparing it to uh, calculi on a case-by-case -case basis using patient postcodes is new. 
Now to, try and to make, now to try to make sense of some of the results that we got. So the associations between water sodium are perhaps surprising. Particularly the sodium intake was, uh, so in particular when we, uh, apologies. So the findings, uh, yeah, with regards to the association between water sodium levels in urate calculi, a number of studies that looked at the link between sodium intake and hypertension have demonstrated that increased salt intake is associated with increased serum and urinary uric acid levels. Now, could such a mechanism result or uh, uh, be implicated in the etiology of urate calculi? Likewise, while the role of sodium as a risk factor for particularly calcium calculi is well established, a few studies here and there have demonstrated that at least, or suggested that at least under circumstances, uh, sodium intake can reduce calcium oxalate supersaturation, at least in certain patient groups, and this might be by increased fluid intake and increased urine volume. However, I'm going to take a step back from speculating about what might be going on here, because one important question arises. The sodium concentrations in the water are tiny, okay? So, in other words, the quantities that are taken in are very small in comparison to dietary sources of sodium. So, are they even physiologically or clinically relevant? The inverse correlation between magnesium calcium oxalate is, is interesting, and this is supported by a lot of studies in the literature of various types. Studies, in vitro studies have demonstrated that magnesium inhibits calcium oxalate crystallization, but interestingly, one observational study found that the calculus incidence inversely correlated with the magnesium concentration in tap water. Having said that, it must be noted that in our study, the magnesium concentration ultimately didn't predict the calculus type on the multivariate analysis. So in other words, patients living in areas with higher magnesium concentration in tap water were just as likely to have calcium oxalate calculi. I think it would be appropriate to spend uh, a few moments just to discuss some of the limitations um, of this study. As we know, many factors are implicated in the etiology of urinary tract calculi as they form over extended periods of time can therefore be very difficult to pick out individual etiological factors with confidence. With this being a retrospective observational study, it was difficult to control a number of variables. Now, some of the obvious variables that were difficult to control, things like the volume of tap water that every patient uh, consumed, as well as the dietary contributions of sodium, calcium, and magnesium. In addition, our study took place in the northwest in England, in a part of the northwest of England, and therefore, the range of water variables in our area are likely limited, especially since this is an area of relatively soft water. It'd be interesting to see if the study was to undertaken in over larger regions to see what the results, how they would differ. Okay, so to summarize, the etiology of urinary tract stone disease is multifactorial. The interesting results relating or in the associations relating to water sodium and magnesium are a need of closer scrutiny and larger scale studies over wider geographical areas. However, this study has identified a number of important areas and questions that need further exploration in order to determine whether the type of water matters when it comes to stone disease. For example, does the water composition correlate with 24-hour urine chemistries? Does the water composition vary widely nationally or internationally? And also, does the composition of tap water fluctuate significantly over time? But why is this all important? Well, Trying to study the relationship between water composition and urinary tract calculi could lead to a better understanding of the etiology of certain types of calculi. In the long run, could this lead to novel etiological strategy, sorry, novel preventative strategies that could be tailored to patients on a case-by-case -case basis? Thank you very much.